2020 is drawing to a close, and after a dramatic roller coaster ride, Flash is reaching end of life, soon to be phased out of existence for good. It's hard to think of a piece of software quite as divisive as Flash. Before the omnipotent age of social media, Flash ruled the web. A piece of software that allowed for interactive content to be embedded on websites, it was everywhere 15 years ago, and it helped to spawn internet culture and meme culture as we know it today. It was an easy to use tool that allowed creatives to share their own videos and games in a convenient way, but it was also a security risk, a performance sloth, and an attention hog that bugged users for constant updates. Only a few years after its peak of popularity, it had lost the faith of most tech giants, and now Flash is all but done. This video aims to trace the genesis, rise, fall, and future of Flash. This is the complete history of Flash. Our story begins in the 1980s in California. Flash's earliest progenitor was Super Paint, a drawing program created by Jonathan Gay on his Apple II computer back in high school in the 80s that won him a science fair award and got him noticed by Charlie Jackson, founder of Silicon Beach Software out in California. Under the Silicon Beach banner, Gay would go on to program a number of games, including Dark Castle, which should be familiar to angry video game nerd fans. I'd say, at least for a platforming game, this is the worst I've played yet. And out of all the shit I've played, that's saying a lot. A commercial version of Super Paint would release in 1986, followed by Super Paint 2 in 1989. Silicon Beach Software were acquired by Aldus in 1990, and at Aldus, Gay would work on Super Paint's successor, IntelliDraw, a vector based graphics application. In 1993, Gay went rogue, founding the company Future Wave Software along with Charlie Jackson. Their first major release was Smart Sketch, a forward thinking drawing application designed for Go Corporation's Penpoint operating system, an OS designed for tablets that used a stylus. Smart Sketch was, unfortunately, a complete disaster as Go was acquired by AT&T who brought a halt to any touch-operated OS plans. A port for Smart Sketch was developed though for Windows and Mac computers. Their next product, Smart Sketch Animator, later renamed Future Splash Animator, supported animation, added interactive elements like buttons, and was designed with the web in mind too. Future Splash went to market in August 1996 and gained its first big proponent when Microsoft decided they'd use it as an integral component of their new MSM web portal. The software was successful enough that in January 1997, Future Splash were purchased by Macromedia, and Future Splash Animator was rebranded as Macromedia Flash. In May 1997, the seminal Macromedia Flash 2 was released. For all intents and purposes, Flash as we know it was born. On February 16th, 2001, something remarkable happened. A user named BadCRC uploaded a video entitled All Your Base Are Belong To Us to a website called Newgrounds. By modern standards, the video was pretty primitive. It consisted of a techno beat using voice clips of the awful Japanese to English translation of a Sega game called Zero Wing, accompanied by some low-res photoshopped images flashing on the screen. It was arguably one of the internet's first major viral sensations, even making it onto news programs across America. And now a story that'll make no sense whatsoever, is it zero zilt? But here it is. There's a new phrase creeping into our language from the internet, and it goes like this. All your base are belong to us. No, you didn't hear me wrong. It goes, all your base are belong to us. Flash and Newgrounds had spawned one of the internet's first memes, and from that starting point, the golden age of Flash began. Plenty of major corporations invested in Flash. Flash content could be found everywhere, from Disney to Cartoon Network, from the WWF to HBO. This is the most powerful website in cyberspace! Welcome to the official Dragon Ball Z website! But for a generation of young artists, Flash represented one of the earliest and most creative ways to share fun content with like-minded people all over the world. And prior to the emergence of YouTube, 
it was Newgrounds that served as the go-to website for talented artists and viral sensations alike. For example, in 2002, Tom Fulp and Dan Paladin released the massively successful Alien Hominid, a stylish and accomplished shooter game that led to the creation of game studio The Behemoth that would go on to release an improved version of this flash hit on consoles and work on similarly styled games like Castle Crashers. In 2003, following in the footsteps of All Your Bass was the Weevil's annoyingly catchy Badger song. Mushroom, mushroom. 2004 brought us perhaps Newground's biggest viral sensation, in the form of G-Man 250's immensely popular Numa Numa dance video, as well as David Firth's disturbing but hilarious creation Salad Fingers. And in 2006, Ego Raptor uploaded the first handful of his insanely successful awesome series of video game parodies, while Alvin Earthworm's first instalments of Super Mario Bros. Z rocked the site. Of course, there's plenty more that I'm not mentioning, and post-2006, Newgrounds would continue to spawn new, successful games and animations. But it's worth mentioning that Newgrounds wasn't the only site where high-quality, creative, fan-made content could be found during Flash's golden age. Let's not forget about Video Game Director's Cuts, a site established by Randy Solom to host his own Flash creations. Randy was something of a pioneer, Using video game assets ripped directly from games, his Flash creations were among the internet's first sprite animations. Seeing Sonic and Mario duke it out, or seeing Mario jam out to I like big butts, was the sort of joy video game director's cuts offered the internet. Similarly, iMockery was another of my personal favourite sites with plenty of fun Flash content. Primarily a pop culture critique site, Roger Barr and the iMockery team also released a whole bunch of extremely fun and very well-crafted Flash games, including the brutal Abobo's Big Adventure and Ivan Drago Justice Enforcer. And of course, in more recent years, TotalJerkFace.com, the site of Jim Bonacci and his chaotic creation Happy Wheels, which has remained relevant all the way up to the present day, thanks to its virality among YouTube Let's Players. Flash had a tremendous impact on the video game industry as a whole, the relative ease with which amateurs could create stylish games using Flash made room in the industry for a wave of talented indie game studios and developers. To quote Tom Fulp of Alien Hominid fame, Flash was the first software that did what I'd always been dreaming of growing up. When Flash came along I was able to animate a character walking and it was immediately in the game. There was really nothing like it, it just made everything so easy. Flash had a tremendous impact on the video game industry and gave rise to an indie scene that produced a number of games that took the world by storm. Games like Super Meat Boy and V being two of the most prominent and critically acclaimed examples. Certain prominent names in the video game industry would have their first successes with Flash, such as with Bennett Foddy and his frustrating game QWOP. Not to mention the fact that Flash even spawned a few online mega-hits with gigantic casual player bases like Farmville on Facebook. You could even argue that games like Angry Birds and Clash of Clans largely owe their existence to the Flash game scene, from whom many of their gameplay mechanics and visual stylings derive. In terms of websites, there's one more site that relied heavily on Flash that we haven't mentioned yet, YouTube. Just like just about every other site that featured video content at the time, YouTube opted to utilise Flash to handle video playback back when the site first launched in 2005. It wasn't long until YouTube ascended to become one of the most visited websites in the world and all of its plumbing and heavy lifting was done by Flash. If Flash was so popular then why exactly did it experience a sharp decline leading to its virtual extinction on the internet? When did this decline begin? When did the golden age of Flash end? A common answer is 2007. In 2007 a survey found that Flash Player was installed on 96% of internet enabled desktops worldwide and was used by over 2 million professionals. In the same year software giant Adobe purchased Macromedia and Flash along with it. Adobe would go on to introduce 3D graphics rendering and look to make Flash a cross-platform application environment that could be used to make applications on desktop, mobile and the web. The future, for a time, looked bright for Flash under Adobe's banner. But a man by the name of Steve Jobs 
CEO and co-founder of Apple, had other ideas. 2007 was also the year that the iPhone launched, Apple's revolutionary product that ushered in a new era of smartphone technology. The iPhone was the first mobile device to support fully featured web browsing, but Apple took the controversial step of not supporting Flash Player. It was a decision that stuck, and all future Apple handheld devices from iPhones to iPods to iPads would follow suit. In 2007, the omission of Flash was a controversial decision. It meant that an awful lot of web content was effectively inaccessible to Apple iPhone users, but Jobs had his reasons for the omission. In 2010, those reasons became public record in the form of an open letter penned by Steve Jobs titled Thoughts on Flash. Thoughts on Flash was an explanation for Apple's lack of support for Flash, particularly on handheld devices, and acted as a killing blow to Flash's golden age, popping Flash's reputation like a balloon. A scathing critique of Adobe, it highlighted all of Flash's ills. It's the best and most concise summary of why Flash's death was inevitable. Here's just a few key things Jobs took exception to with Flash. Number one, its proprietary nature making it subject entirely to Adobe's whims, in contrast with the open nature of HTML5. Number two, Flash was wrought with security issues. Jobs highlighted that Flash had one of the worst security records in 2009, and was cited as being one of the primary reasons for Mac's crashing. Number three, for technical reasons owing to Flash's outdated nature, playing Flash videos consumed roughly double the amount of battery life on mobile devices in contrast to non-Flash videos. And number four, Flash websites and applications were designed with PCs in mind, and many Flash apps were reliant on a mouse in order to function, rendering a lot of Flash's functionality unavailable on mobile devices. Ultimately, Jobs was right. In contrast to the iPhone, early Android smartphones did try to accommodate Flash, and even used this fact as a selling point, but Flash did indeed prove to be a security risk, a battery drain, unresponsive, and an impediment to page loading speeds. Adobe simply couldn't act fast enough to make Flash fit for purpose on mobile devices. In 2012, Adobe dropped all support for Android devices. The vision of the future of the net lay in the smartphone, and Flash weren't part of it. If Apple accelerated the decline of Flash in 2010, then the final nails were truly being hammered into its coffin in 2015. In January, YouTube officially ditched Flash in favour of HTML5 video across the site. And in July, Mozilla blocked all versions of Flash by default in Firefox. By December, an official Adobe announcement said that Adobe would encourage content creators to build with new web standards, such as HTML5. It also began to deprecate the Flash name by renaming its animation app to Animate. In short, the decade that followed Adobe's acquisition of Flash was characterized by continual decline, punctuated by one major tech company after another, losing faith in and dropping support for Flash. In July 2017, Adobe announced that it would declare Flash to be end of life at the end of 2020 and would cease support distribution, and security updates for Flash Player, which brings us right to the present day. Before we close the book on Flash, there's just a few questions that are worth trying to answer. Number one, what replaced Flash? Well, 2008 introduced the world to HTML5, a new standard for web markup language. That, along with continual improvements in CSS and JavaScript, went a long way in allowing web developers to add video, animation, and other stylish elements to websites without relying on an external plugin. In the realm of gaming, plenty of new tools and frameworks like Unity have since been introduced that allow amateurs to pick up and develop cross-platform games relatively easily. Number two, who killed Flash? It'd be easy to point the finger at Apple and Jobs, but the truth is, with surmounting pressure, Adobe failed to keep Flash safe, relevant, and up-to-date, and need to shoulder a large portion of the blame for Flash's eventual demise. However, I tend to agree with Eric Zoka, former VP of Engineering at Adobe, who points to abstract changes in web design as the main reason for Flash's decline. Changes such as the mass adoption of the photocentric web 
the transition to websites that are composed mainly of large, static images, which can easily be created without Flash. And finally, three, what will happen to Flash and Flash games in the future? There have been attempts to convince Adobe to make Flash available as open source software, but they haven't proved successful thus far. As is often the case, it's been fans and enthusiasts who have worked hard over the years to catalogue and preserve Flash content, and create emulators that can play Flash. For example, the Internet Archive introduced an emulator to run Flash animations in November 2020, opening a new collection for creators and users to save existing animations. In short, Flash will die, but the many creations it spawned will live on. I personally hope that the lasting legacy of Flash will be the creativity it helped to unleash. Flash created an easy-to-use outlet that allowed creatives the world over to share their creations with the internet, many of whom have gone on to do bigger and brighter things in the game industry, music industry and beyond. Thank you for watching and thanks to any creator who used Flash to entertain me and entertain the world. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know your favourite Flash content so we can all reminisce together. And to Flash, all I gotta say is, good night, sweet prince.